Say, have you ever wondered what some of these insects are that are around your yard and garden? This is Carol Sutherland. I'm an extension entomologist with the Extension Plant Sciences Department here at New Mexico State University. I've been asked to introduce myself to you today and to give you an idea of what an entomologist does and also maybe some ideas about what you can expect later on during the season as we focus on some of these insects that we'll be finding in our habitats. Uh, some of the things that I'm really interested in, as far as entomology goes, are the various insects that we have here in the state, things that are native, and of course a lot of things that are introduced now. And some of these may become uh, quite newsworthy, some of them may be uh, quite damaging to pest plants that we might want to keep in our uh, yards or gardens, and some of these things we're going to want to be aware of. Many of the insects that we'll see here in our uh, habitat are probably not going to be damaging to us, but uh, you probably need some help in identifying those, and that's one of the things that I can help you with, is identification. In fact, that's one of the things that I really do enjoy, is identification of all different kinds of insect creatures that people bring in, and some of their relatives as well. Of course, we have many uh, different kinds of insects in the state, we also have lots of spiders and other kinds of things that you're going to encounter now as the yard and garden season begins to uh, develop here in the southern part of the state particularly. We'll see a lot of these things up close and you'll have uh, some background information, some biology to uh, understand and maybe you'll learn something about the role of these uh, different kinds of organisms in nature and what, if anything, that you really need to do about them. As we go through time here, we'll take a look at some familiar yard and garden plants, and we'll probably be looking for evidence of insect infestation, or perhaps where we've got some beneficials present. We may also look at places where you, as a gardener, can help your plant along to make it less susceptible to insect damage. As we look at this particular tree here, we can see some evidence of uh, insect activity already going on. One of the things that I've found here is a little egg case from a praying mantis. This was probably laid the previous year or perhaps a little bit longer ago than that. But what this amounts to, it's the overwintering stage for the familiar praying mantis that we have around here. The female will lay this egg mass. The egg mass stays here over the winter time and shortly then the immatures will hatch. When they emerge from this egg mass, they'll be uh, coming out hanging around but very briefly because they're quite uh, cannibalistic. They are predaceous and they soon leave the area so that they don't all end up being each other's breakfast and lunch. Some other things that I see here on this tree that will be of interest to us uh, a little bit later on in the season. We have some evidence here of uh, previous injury where we've got a dead twig up here in the crotch of a uh, uh, live part of the tree. This piece of deadwood here may be attractive to some of the boring insect pests as time goes on. And with a little bit of corrective pruning and taking care of this sort of situation before it gets any worse, you can probably save yourself a little bit of time and money as far as pest invasions go. We've got some uh, evidence here on the other side of a major split in the uh, tree branch. And again, in situations like this, probably from storm injury, we can save ourselves a little bit of uh, time and expense by uh, maybe doing a little bit of corrective work on this kind of damage, and that will keep some of these wood boring insects out of our uh, landscape plants. In many cases, some of these insects we can learn about, but we may be pretty limited in our options to treat them simply from the standpoint that once they enter a plant like this, they're not susceptible to a lot of the insects, insecticides that we have currently available for controlling pests. Here on this afghan pine, I can see several things I've already been asked about this uh, garden season. For one thing, on our pine trees, at this time of year, we have the development of the male cones, not only on our pines, but also on junipers and many of the other evergreens. These are not pest problems at all, which is what one person was trying to confuse with these little structures. These are going to be producing the pollen that will fertilize the female cones, which are up higher in the tree. So these are nothing to worry about. Now, you may have noticed 
here in the sunlight that this tree is awfully shiny. And now that I'm touching the foliage here, I can feel that it's very sticky to the touch. Further, I can even see some tiny little droplets that have accumulated down here at the bottom. They have a look and a feel about like, uh, oh, syrup for pancakes, quite sticky. This is a material called honeydew. It's the waste product of an aphid infestation. It's not unusual at this time of year for many of our conifers and some of our other plants to get very large populations of aphids building up on them. And that's certainly what has happened here. And here, if I turn this just right, we may be able to see the larval stage of a beneficial organism. There he is. He looks like a little gray alligator with orange stripes on him. That is the larva of a ladybird beetle or a ladybug. And this would be a predator or beneficial of many of the aphids that we have that are feeding on our plants in our gardens and in our landscape plants. These are beneficial, but because they look kind of ugly, a lot of people think that they're pests and they try to find different methods to kill them. These are insects that you need to be familiar with and be aware that they do have a life cycle that involves multi-parts. They start out as eggs, they become larvae that look like little alligators, pupae that dangle on the plants. We'll see those a little bit later on. They dangle kind of like little earrings. And then the familiar ladybug shapes that we'll see. All right, well, just in closing here, I'd like to ask that if you do find some insects and their relatives that you're not familiar with, that before you reach for that spray can or whatever you think you're going to do about it, let's identify it first. Please take a sample of it, take it to your county agent, and they will forward it on to me if necessary. Together we can find out what this insect is and help you determine what should be done about it, if anything.